What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out Austin Theory apparently going off on someone for calling wrestling fake, and uh, WWE fans are unhappy with John Cena. Um, the situation of John Cena being on the Howard Stern show. If you guys hadn't seen the video, I talked about that in uh, a little bit more detail. Go check that out. I recently dropped that. I want to say yesterday, but you know, people are not happy with John Cena's remarks in supporting Vince McMahon and bad news for Brock Lesnar this should be very interesting we're gonna see what WrestleMania has to say about some of these stories appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel we're gonna get right into this one let's check this bad boy out man what's going on guys it is WrestleMania here back with another video join us now as we look at this week's edition of Dynamite as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know including the WWE star furious after a journalist calls wrestling fake. Mm -hmm. Sylvester Stallone set for WrestleMania 40. Triple H breaks his silence about Cody destroying the throne. Fans mm. not happy with John Cena. Is The Rock at Elimination Chamber? Sad news for Sting. Brock Lesnar not on the 2K24 roster. Wow. And much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania Shorts. As always, we won't recap the show, but just look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. As always, we start off with the good as number one FTR Blackpool Combat Club Instant Classic. Mm. AEW's bloated roster is a big problem, but at times it can work out as a promotion as so many instant classics it can make thanks to its many talented performers. FTR vs the BCC was one such match, and sure enough, it delivered, despite no titles being on the line. As fans have seen with both teams, professional pride is enough to get them to throw down. Mm, Number two, okay. strong build up for Revolution. Like Monday's Raw, Dynamite was an entertaining show and a strong build up for an upcoming PLE or here pay per view. There's no reason why you can't do both, as Dynamite hyped up Revolution while also getting out of the slump it's been in the last two weeks. Number three, family is the only. I did see the the um the situation with uh with Christian Cage and Daniel Garcia. I saw that little promo back and forth segment. He started bringing up his father once, uh, you know, <laughs> his father once again, I guess <laughs> Daniel Garcia's father is uh, passed away. So, you know, that's his stick. Anyone's father that's dead, he's, he's gonna bring it up. It was cool the first few times he did it. Like the first time I was like, oh, okay. Then he started bringing it up some more. I was like, okay, I guess it's his thing, but now it's it's kind of to me it doesn't work as much but we know that's like his gimmick now it's like talking about dead people dead pe like parents like uh people's dead parents like specifically their fathers it's kind of wild so i i saw it i was like uh <laughs> i wish we went with somewhere somewhere else but the crowd was loving it because they knew he was about to talk about someone's dead father per usual christian is a fucking menace though he needs to he needs to catch the beats fairly soon <laughs> anything that matters sting and darby allen's promo sizzle last night with darby setting the stage for sting's promo by talking up success in wrestling but admitting that family is the only thing that matters sting continued telling the bucks that up until now no one has ever messed with his flesh and blood but watching sting fans could sense the fury behind sting's words as he told the brothers jackson that they're in for a fight of their lives a revolution AEW's ability to take the magic of Sting's retirement match and turn it into a violent grudge match is next level booking. Number four. I just wish they would have, wish Darby would have kind of alluded to that more last week with his promo. He kind of went <laughs> on like this work shoot style, but I'm glad that they were able to kind of get things back in track. I'm definitely going to check out the pay-per-view because, I mean, it's Sting's last match. Who's not going to want to see that? It's his very last match of his career. Definitely got to check that out. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this pay-per-view uh, pans out. Is Jake Hager getting a push? Like many AEW talents, Hager has been stuck in the background for far too long and seeing him run in for a save for Orange Cassidy could be the start of something big. While AEW didn't explain Hager's sudden interest in the international champion, Hager did post a picture of him and Cassidy on Imga with the caption, I wish I was as cool as my big brother. Whether hmm. this is a babyface turn as some fans believe or a swerve headed into revolution, we're happy to see Hager doing something and even happier that he appears to have ditched that stupid blue hat. <laughs> Number 5, Daniel Garcia shines. It looks like AEW is finally recognizing Daniel Garcia as more than someone who just rounds out a faction. Last night's announcement that Garcia is challenging Christian for the TNT Championship was good news for Garcia and his fans who have wondered when he'd be back in the singles title picture after dropping the Ring of Honor Pure Championship. 
Garcia was excellent on the stick and kept up with Captain Charisma. It was also a breath of fresh air to see Garcia's pal Daddy Magic, Matt Menard, lend a hand against Killswitch. The segment was a reminder of how mid-card wrestlers can play a supporting role as Menard did and possibly mm -hmm. move up the card. Christian Cage crushes it as always. <laughs> Is Christian's formula of trying to manipulate opponents by exposing their daddy issues getting old? Well, no, not yet. And Daniel Garcia's reply shows how to put a spin on a successful formula cleverly. <laughs> Garcia shined as he shut down Captain Charisma's usual shtick of trying to attack Garcia's dead dad and join the patriarchy. Garcia's invitation for Cage to join him in the ring so we can bury him next to his dad was, that was stone cold. But that was that was a good response. I'm not gonna lie to you. I like his response there. It was like, I'll I'll bury you next to him. That was a good response. I like that. That was cool. I, I it's cool to see that from Daniel Garcia. Hopefully they can expound on that. Me personally, I know it gets a reaction. I knew it was coming. Um, but I, I don't want that to just be his thing. You know, he happens to face wrestlers where their fathers have passed away. Like I said, it was cool the first few times. It, it is kind of running its course, but the crowd likes it. The in, in crowd that's there, the live audience, they're like, ooh, no. Nah. I, I knew as soon as he started bringing up, he actually low-key kind of doxed his mom. He brought up the fucking address. I'm like, bro, what are you, what is this? Christian needs to be stopped. He's doxing people and talking about dead parents. What's wrong with you? Someone needs to put him in the grave. But I love it. I love what he's doing. He's still the best heel in AEW, bro. It's fucking fantastic. Good, what about the bad is number one, don't get carried away with draws. Now, last night's time limit draw between FTR and the BCC was a great way to build up a match at Revolution, but booking two time limit draws in back-to-back -back weeks is a lazy booking. Mm -hmm. AEW's policy of avoiding cheap finishes like DQs or countouts helps their matches stand out, but they also need to avoid time limit draws, especially two weeks in a row. And Wardlow going nowhere. Yeah. Wardlow is going nowhere fast. He has a look and a good mix of wrestling moves and plenty of support from the fans. Sadly, Wardlow's career is an object lesson on how not to book someone. Yeah. Mr. Mayhem was AEW's hottest act after he defeated MJF way back at Double or Nothing, and yet he hasn't done anything significant since. AEW couldn't book the big man any worse if it tried. It was nothing. Yeah. I saw his promo. Ah, oh, man. He brought up CM Punk for whatever reason. Like he was he was the guy that really broke down CM Punk. CM Punk's haven't been the same since his body still keeps breaking down. I'm like, what? What are we doing? That doesn't even help. Like, we gotta stop doing that. That's still AEW's biggest gripe. They gotta stop doing that. They gotta stop doing that. It's different depending on the person. It's different depending on the person, their history, and what they're trying to sell. Like, when MJF and CM Punk was having their feud, it made sense at that time. But they didn't overdo it. It made sense. We understood what the situation was. This makes no sense. There was no reason to bring up CM Punk being injured. Why are you doing that? Last week, they brought up fucking Cody indirectly with the Darby Allin promo, which has nothing to do with y'all feud right now. Man, the fact that uh, Wardlow was, t it was like kind of a work shoot again, where he's pretty much talking about how he's been booked horribly. He's in another group as a lackey. What are we doing? I, bro, they, they got to study how they fucked this up. Wardlow should have been the, he should, he should have been the next guy up, potentially. He said it in his promo. Every city they went to, they were chanting Wardlow. It reminded me of a, a young Goldberg. And it was cool to see. And they fucked it up. They they dish, they messed him over. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know what they do with him, but him bringing up CM Punk didn't help. I don't know. I, I, I have no idea what you do with him. Honestly, he does not need to be in that group because what's, what's the point, bro? Jeez. Downright ugly, Dynamite was a step in the right direction with more competitive matches and some surprises like Jake Hager's apparent face turn. There also seems to be good news on Hangman Adam Page as Fightful has reported that he seems to be okay, though Dave Meltzer has a conflicting report and says that he's broken his ankle. Whatever the case, we hope Hangman is okay. What do you guys think of Dynamite last night? Let us know in the comments down below. Now let's move on to the news. Yeah, y'all let me know. Uh, I didn't really watch Dynamite. I've only checked out uh, a few clips. So y'all let me know if y'all did enjoy uh, Dynamite. If you did, watch it.
That first story looks at a WWE star furious after mm -hmm. a journalist called Wrestling Fake. A top of today's news is an incident involving WWE superstar Austin yep. Theory and the newspaper The Western Australia's editor Anthony De Kegli. According to an article on the paper's website, what seemed like friendly banter got serious as Theory took offense at wrestling being called fake and yep. not as hard as Australian rules football or rugby league. Shock staff were genuinely unsure what to do as Theory got so wild that he had to be carted away by WWE security. A video surfaced of the exchange and here's what Theory had to say. You brought me here and you're going to talk to me like this just because you're in charge of some sh doesn't mean that you can talk to me like mm -hmm. this. You're saying what I do is easy and you're in front of all your people talking about my job is easy. You can't walk a damn day in my shoes. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? I will smack the shit out of you right now. <laughs> I'm not playing around. Y'all bring me all the way here for some media and this guy is talking his effing head off. What's his problem? And you may recall Grayson Waller had a similar mm -hmm. incident when he and LA Knight appeared on an Australian morning show and Waller took offense with the host asking him to perform a move on him. Do you think A-Town's apparent near beatdown on the Australian journalist was legit or was it a publicity stunt? Let us know in the comments down below. I saw the clip. It could have been a work. Either way, I, I said this on Twitter, man. This is the Austin Theory I want to see more of. His real life persona. This is what I want to see. Because what they got him doing right now with this run of the meal heel gimmick with Grayson Waller, to me, it's, just, it's not really hitting. But seeing more of his real persona flow through uh, his character, I think that could benef be beneficial. Because the way he was talking, I, I was all for it. I was all for it. Once again, don't know if it's a work or if it's, uh, you know, if it's real or not. But I like the way he was talking. He let it be known. I slapped the shit out of you. The shit ain't fake. And people got to stop. People that don't watch wrestling, they don't fucking know. They think they know. No. You go out there, you get in that ring, and you see if it's fake or not. You see if you catching a chop to the chest. You let the wrestlers know, oh, it's fake. The injuries that they think they potentially go through, the bruising, the bleeding. Yeah, let them know if it's fake or not. I'm sure they can tell you. Tell that to Seth Rollins. Tell that to Cody who wrestled with a torn pec. Granted, it, the torn peck didn't happen in the match, but tell that to them. Tell that to Triple H who broke torn ligaments mid-match and still kept going. I'm just saying. Just saying. I'm all for it. I, I, I wish they would have more of that version of Austin Theory. The serious take no bullshit from anybody Austin Theory. Like they were doing for a little bit when he uh, lost the money in the bank briefcase and then they kind of dropped it, so... Next up, Sylvester Stallone set for WrestleMania 40. Now it seems like A-lister Sylvester Stallone could appear at WrestleMania 40. As WrestleVotes is reporting, sources within WWE indicate that there's interest in collaborating with Sylvester Stallone for WrestleMania in some form. While any communication status is unclear, I'm told there's hope for it. Whether it ultimately ends up happening or not is to be determined. To be very New interesting. York City gained fame through the iconic Rocky films deeply associated with Philadelphia. Additionally, Stallone mm. is no stranger to the WWE world, having inducted Hulk Hogan into the Hall of Fame in 2000. And five. There's no word on what the collab might be, but we'll continue monitoring this story. That could be Next interesting. Up, Triple H breaks silence about Cody destroying the throne. Oh. Although it's been several years since it happened, fans still talk about AEW's 2019 Double or Nothing show where Cody Rhodes took a sledgehammer and destroyed a throne, with AEW fans enjoying the American Nightmare sending a message to the WWE and mm -hmm. Triple H. However, how does Triple H really feel about the segment? He okay. opened up during an appearance on Alan and Carly's show, saying, I laughed about it then. People make that stuff to be so much more than it is. If I was in his shoes, I'd have done the same thing. And it's one of the things that I love about Cody is, I watch Cody go from being a kid in this business, and I don't mean that as respectful, he's literally a kid. Triple H did his fair share of throwing shade mm -hmm. at the competition during the Monday Night War. Yeah. For example, who can forget the game and the rest of DX attempting to invade an episode of WCW's Nitro back in 98. Yeah. But Cody has come a long way since his first run in WWE, and he could finally finish his story at WrestleMania 40. What do you guys think about Helmsley's comments about the American Nightmare? Let us know in the comments down below. And here's the thing, y'all. The only people that take shit like that serious is fucking wrestling fans on Twitter. It's the only people that take that shit seriously. You think these guys take that shit seriously? He probably, I believe him. He probably, like, oh, that's funny. Probably didn't, okay. I mean, Triple H literally and DX literally, that was part of a thing to go to WCW and try to invade. 
That was that was a thing. So it's like it's I mean, people have taken shots and little digs at people all the time. Hell, fucking Stone Cold did it when he was in ECW, taking shots at Hulk Hogan. How many people have taken shots at Hulk Hogan? It's 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 fine. It's part of wrestling. You take ribs at each other, but they don't even take that shit seriously. Sometimes they do, depending on what you say, and then sometimes they don't. Most of the time, they don't really give a fuck. It's whatever, bro. It's fine. The only people that take it seriously are the fucking internet wrestling nerd virgins that take that shit way too seriously. They don't even get paid for it. Just being that, oh, 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 yeah, um, Triple H is going to punish Cody for what he did three, four years ago. Shut up. Next up, will The Rock show up at Elimination Chamber? Mm. With Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins scheduled to appear on the Grayson Waller effect, some fans believe that The Rock and Roman Reigns will also appear, presumably to set up a tag team match at WrestleMania 40. However, a tweet from Wrestle Features mentioned Triple H confirms that although The Rock isn't set for WWE Chamber this weekend, The Rock is booked for lots of events in the future. Mm. A WWE also posted a video of The Rock talking smack about Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins, saying he won't be there in Perth, Australia. But somehow, watching over the interview, doesn't it feel like he is going to turn up? Whatever the case, Elimination Chamber could be very, very interesting. Yeah. Next up, fans know. Just know that Grayson Waller uh, effect, that segment that they have Cody and Seth conveniently both on there. Best believe there's going to be something that happens. Whether they show up in person or via satellite, just know there's a reason why Paul Heyman was talking to Grayson Waller. So, not happy with John Cena. Now, there's some interesting comments coming from John Cena. The 16 time mm -hmm. world champion recently claimed that he's never taken performance enhancing drugs. Some fans may find this doubtful. However, Cena's recent remarks on accountability and his relationship with Vince McMahon mm -hmm. are raising eyebrows. Cena told Howard Stern, I've openly said, I love the guy. I have a great relationship with the guy, and that's that. It's largely my construct of operating with honesty and communication. The whole thing is super unfortunate and it sucks. It deals with an individual I love and an entity I love. Cena also commented, I can say this, I'm a big advocate of love and friendship and honesty and communication in the same breath. I'm also a big advocate of accountability. If someone's behavior lies so far outside your value system that the balance shifts off, I can't operate in a world where this works. That's the end result of being accountable. But some fans are questioning just what Cena is saying and whether it's a case of him blurring the issue given his well-known friendship with Vince McMahon. Next up, Brock Lesnar not on and the- And we talked about this once again. That's his choice. He's choosing to stay, um, to stay loyal to an individual. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. And he put out there the accountability part, you know. Vince got to be accountable for some of these things if it comes out to be true. He has to be accountable, but he's still going to have his back, which is nothing wrong with that. They're actually friends or, you know, they have a real close relationship. So I, I can't knock someone for doing that. But it does look weird when some of these fans be like, oh, yeah, I'm sure. Nah, Vince never did those type of things. They just live in this this world of you can't believe someone would do such such a thing. You'd be surprised who you look up to and who you idolize what they do. I mean, just watch the television that we've been watching for all, damn near all our lives. Vince has always been into some wild and interesting and sometimes sick stuff that we would even see on television. So I can't get mad. I'm not going to get mad at John Cena for having having his back or supporting him during this time. He probably doesn't support what the allegations are, obviously. But he's going to support him during this time and, and you know, see where things play out. But I'm not going to get mad at John for that shit. It's not, it's not my life. You feel me? The 2K24 roster. Speaking of the controversy surrounding Vince McMahon, a recent roster update from 2K Games concerning 2K24 suggests Brock Lesnar and Vince McMahon may have been removed from the game entirely. Inside Seats noted, on Wednesday afternoon, the Twitter account for 2K24 posted the full roster for the March releasing game would be coming later today. According to Cade's side, the subsequent report failed to list Lesnar and McMahon. However, those aren't the only exclusions. Drew McIntyre also wasn't on the list. Oh, wow. Kurt Angle wasn't among the legends, and NXT fans noticed that Gallus Wolfgang and Joe Kofi were there, but their teammate Mark Kofi was missing. 
Other legends were also absent. Ken Shamrock, Ricky Steamboat, and Georgie Animal Steel aren't on the list, and the same social media account promoted their inclusion a couple of hours before the full roster tease. But Sean Ross Sapp also tweeted, 2K have sent us what they say is the full WWE 2K24 roster, and Brock Lesnar is not on it. Damn. Now, this could still be a possibility of 2K downplaying the McMahon and Lesnar situation. But according to a new update by Fightful Select, Regarding Brock Lesnar and some other names, we're told that there are some characters that are included in My Rise and Showcase that are considered historically significant but will not be playable in the game outside of those modes. Uh, okay. WWE also made requests to not feature Brock Lesnar in the game as a playable character. Wow. It looks like WWE are doing all they can to make Brock Lesnar's appearance in the game as minimal as humanly possible. And finally, San Damn, bro. So basically, it's, it's going to be, you know, if you do the My Rise whatever particular match that he obviously was in you have to face him in yeah he'll be there you know but he won't be a playable character it's crazy bro that's crazy Phew. all because he got grouped in this those allegations bro it's it's crazy what, what can you do until more information comes out until they actually go to trial or whatever and and things get settled this is going to be the foreseeable future for Vince and Brock. Like, they, WWE is trying to completely distance them, distance themselves from them. So Brock won't be playable this year in WWE 2K. Bad news for Sting. Last but not least, Sting revealed during his promo for his retirement match at Revolution that his father passed away recently. We here at WrestleMania send Damn. our condolences to Sting on the loss of his father. But there you have it, folks. The wildest news stories and rumors you need to know. Rest as in well peace as I look at to Sting's father. I did not know that. Rest in peace to his father. Please, oh, please don't. Well, I'm glad this is going to be his last match. I'm glad he's not getting into it with fucking Christian Cage. Because you know Christian loves to bring up dead fathers. So I'm glad he's do having this feud with the Young Bucks and call it a day. No future Christian Cage segment with Sting. Thank goodness. Oh, no more of that shit. I'm glad they left. That's in the past now. But rest in peace to his father, though, all seriousness. Um, it's tough losing a grandparent, a friend, and uh, and a parent, and just anyone that you love and care about. It's definitely tough losing them. Um, but I'm pretty sure his father was proud of the man that he's become. He is one of the most iconic wrestlers ever. Ever. Everyone knows who Sting is. And that's because he's built his legacy and, uh, you know, he deserves to be recognized so i'm sure his father um hopefully was proud of the son you know his son and, and what he's done for just the world man so you know wrestling we we look at it with you know fond memories and you'd be surprised how we can change someone's life just watching a great wrestling match and then you know can inspire people to you know be better and and keep pushing you know people look at wrestling as a as an escape and it can save people's lives i'm sure it has so that's that's one of those things he sting is at a legendary career but comment down below let me know man would you like to see more of austin theory like show more of his real self like like what we saw or what we didn't see it but what was said in the the clip towards the the guy that was calling wrestling fake if you haven't seen this clip go watch it it's on social media it should be on youtube and twitter for sure but would you like guys like to see a more serious austin theory going forward I, I me personally i think we definitely need to see that serious side of him because i think it could do wonders for his character but i appreciate all the love and support road to 150k and i'm still young speed to youtube wrestling share with the world appreciate y'all kicking it with me see y'all next one peace